Granted to us. No! Please. No! Please. No! Stop! I come in the name of the one true God. change the situation. What we require is action now. We have been tricked by this man, Patrick. He came here presenting himself as an innocent and a servant of the church. Now he rules Ireland as if he were its high king. The shrewdest man is often the one who presents himself as the fool. He was helped in this ploy by a bishop whom we have in the past trusted. A bishop whose views we shall question in future. We must call Patrick here to answer to us. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. Ireland belongs under the rule of the British Church. Rome would concede this, but Patrick would not. Now, I believe that unless we stop this man, he will convert that pagan island not to the Christian church, but to the church of his own God, the church of Patrick. Now, will we allow that to happen? No. 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 Will we let a former slave rob us of the tithes and respect due from the converted heathens of Ireland? No. 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 Then let this wild man come down from the hills of Ireland and explain himself before the rule of our church. I, Patrick, a sinner quite uncultivated and the least of all the faithful and despised by many. Had as my father, Calpornius, son of the late Petitus, who lived in the town of Vanavum Tavernier in Britain. He had a small estate nearby, and it was there. I'll take this now. The poor boy has been so long at his studies, he must be starving. Patrick! Patrick, I know you didn't want to be disturbed at your studies, but you must eat. Patrick? <sighs> Not again. Hutchins! 
you're crazy. Soon you won't be able to have this kind of freedom. I don't consider risking my neck to be any kind of freedom. The trick is, you have to go with it. The trouble with you is, you think too much, and you don't think enough. It's going to get you into more and more trouble. There's something I want to show you. Who told you about this place? Owen and Eli. I wish you chose your friends more wisely. We all can't be as perfect as you now, can we? Do you know what feast approaches? No. Sawan. It's the pagan festival of the new year. As the earth changes hands with the gods of day into the gods of night. Soon I won't be around to talk sense to you. Patrick, promise me you won't get yourself involved in such things. No, of course not. Patrick! None of the trouble you've managed to get yourself into so far would compare to what you would face by getting involved in this. <laughs> Brilliant! I told you I have a talent for getting out of trouble. Have you no appreciation of what we've done for you? <sighs> Do you think all of these things fell out of the sky? My father worked hard to better himself so that I, in turn, could improve the quality of my life. And why was all this work done? For you! But not so that you could one day rest on our shoulders and drain the family fortune by your laziness and your unforgivable lies. Father, there was a reason. No, not a reason. You always have an excuse. Brian has been his lifelong friend. Today was his last chance to see him. If only some of Brian's diligence would rub off on Patrick. Brian is making the most of his lot, humble though that may be. In each generation, the father struggles so that the son may rise higher than he, not sink like you. Caponius, you're too harsh. Oh, he doesn't listen anyway. The Romans have shrunk from us, and Britain is left to rule itself. We have the Saxons invading on one side and those thugs, the Celts, invading on the other. A new Britain must be forged, and you have the choice of being either the hammer or the molded iron. There are only two paths in this life. Be master or be slave. Which would you be? Father, I promise. I'll apply myself. I, I won't fail my studies again. There'll be no more stunts, I promise. Calpornius. You can see Patrick's sorry for what he's done. Give him another chance. You mean yet another chance. Patrick, you can see your father is only concerned for your welfare. Yes, Mother. Now, you must promise to apply yourself to your studies now. For your own sake, if not for mine. Mother, I promise. I'll hardly take my eyes off my books long enough to smile at you until my studies are complete. Man come to take you away. You've come to join in. No, I did not. Do what then? Watch, coward. It's a sin. A sin? Says who? Your parents. When did you become so holy? So you just came to look. Then we'll give them something to see. No, no, you can't. You think we came out here to watch the dawn and go home again? Come with us, Patrick. No, no, I couldn't. Come on. No, don't. Don't. Call 
on you now, O gods of darkness. We pray to you in wait for the dawning of your rule on Earth. Let the land fall to sleep, and the gods of dark forces take command. We plead to you for our safekeeping at your hand. of darkness. Praise to the spirit of Samhain. Praise to the lords of the underworld who take hold of our land in the dawning of their time. Boy, fine strapping lad. You'll fetch a tidy sum for us back in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> On your feet. Oh. Oh. As a youth, I was taken captive, before I had the sense to know what to seek and what to avoid, and before I knew the true God. I was taken to Ireland with so many others, and we deserved it, because we drew away from God, and he brought on us the fury of his anger. <laughs> A spirited one. I always enjoy breaking the spirited ones. My father's a tax collector for the Roman Empire. He has many friends in the Legion. Ah, oh, there isn't a Roman soldier left in your weak little country. How much for this one? Four gold pieces. Father will pay you ten times that much for my return. <laughs> <laughs> the boy's a lunatic. But then he can keep his own company with the work I'll put him to. I'll take him for three gold pieces. John, please, get a message to my father. I come from the town of Banavum Tiberne in the west of Britain. He's a nobleman there. His name's Calponius. Please. She won't help you. Nola's a good slave. She knows it's the law of this land that if a slave is found on the road without his master, he's put to death. We'll put him to work in the western region of my lands. He can tend my flocks there. 
Yes, my lord. So your father would pay me ten times your price. A nobleman's son indeed. The Britons are a race of madmen. Remember me, the slave girl from the village? I've brought some food. My father sent me. You're supposed to come down to the village the day after every full moon for your provisions, remember? Gorge now and starve next week. You have to accept your lot. You're a slave now. Slave? No. I'll tell you what I am. I'm dead and this is hell. No, it's just to Ireland. This is another place and you're Irish now. Go away. I knew what you said was true. You weren't born to poverty or servitude. You must accept or go mad. My father says we should wed. We would make children. You could get better work from our master. My father would get a reward. What do I care about your father's reward? Look at me. My hands are raw. And I'm cold and I'm wet and I'm starving. And I don't know when I'm going to get out of this place. Things could be worse. At least you have your life. What good is that? That's up to you. Life is a gift, no matter how humble. I must be on my way. If my master catches me here, he'll beat me. I'll bring you more food tomorrow. Nula. Thanks. You're welcome, Patrick. God, Father in heaven, look down on me. Your lost son, the least of your flock, worthless sinner that I am, have mercy on me. Have pity on me. Hear my cry, O oh Lord. Hear my cry. Patrick, make peace with yourself. God is with you and greets you as one chosen by him to do his work. What's happening to me? This I know for certain, that before I was humbled, I was like a stone lying in deep mud. And God in his mercy lifted me up and placed me on the top of the wall. And so I ought to shout out loud and give thanks to the Lord for my awakening. I pastured the flocks every day, and more and more did my love of God grow. My spirit was stirred, and as a result, I would say up to a hundred prayers in one day, and almost as many at night. I would even stay in the forests and in the mountains, and wake to pray before dawn in all weathers. And I felt no harm and no tiredness. As I now realize, it was because the spirit was alive in me. <laughs> Nula. Hello, Patrick. Will you walk with me? 
if you ask me nicely. <laughs> you haven't been to visit me in a while. I haven't been able to get away. Are you going back up to the mountain soon? Yeah. I tell you, my spirit's been... I wish I could explain it to you, but I can hardly explain it to myself. You there. Boy. What's this one called? Patrick, sir. The villagers call him the Holy Youth. Why aren't you in the fields? I've come to collect my provisions. Your flock is healthy. Not a lamb lost in the three seasons they've been in my care. What's this smile? Do I have happy slaves? Am I too soft? Don't you know I rule over you with the power of life and death? I am your servant as I am that of the Lord. Though he is a master I choose to serve. <laughs> The master I choose says we should treat others as we'd have them treat us. Kill this slave. Do you fear me now? I only fear one far greater than you. Wait. Why throw my money away? Wasted enough already paying for a mad Briton to tend my flocks. Patrick, he could have killed you. But he didn't. How could you be so certain? I don't know. I cannot keep silent about the great benefits the Lord conferred on me in the land of my captivity. I was not worthy of such grace during the trials of my years of slavery. It was something I never hoped for, nor imagined in my youth. Patrick, your ship is ready. Nula! Nula, come here! Patrick, what are you doing here? You should be with your flock. I'm leaving. What? I heard a voice. I had a dream. I, I can't explain it, but it told me I should leave. Come with me. The punishment for a runaway slave is death. Look, I know this is the right thing to do. Please, Nula, come with me. I wish I had your courage. It's not courage. It's faith. May your God protect you on your journey. <laughs> Someone's coming. Remember me. I ran away from the man who had been my master for six years and followed the guide of the vision to the ship. Who is the captain here? Who'd be asking? I'm Patrick. Our Lord God sent me telling him that you will grant me safe passage back to my country. <laughs> is that a fact? With his wish. And your fair home you'll get there, huh? <laughs> I have no money. Oh, well, you'll have to get money from your god if you expect to come with us. Are you refusing? That? I am. Strange. Didn't think God would will something for it then to be refused. Still, saying no to God is your choice, I suppose. It's between you and him. What's he doing? Praying to his God. It's a bad omen. Won't you take him? Oh, grant him passage for free. Are, are you as mad as he is? What if this God of his turns the sea against us? Look, we pay homage to the gods of land and sea. Do we have to take this lad with us as well?
Lad. If it pleases your God, we'll, uh, we'll take you with us. Go summon your mistress. Myself, really. Your father said we must tend you. <sighs> I think I still remember how to wear fine clothes. <laughs> you certainly do. We're preparing a feast for you. This house is going to have a celebration at last. Is there anything you specially want? My needs are few, really. Anything. Anything you want. Well, there is one thing that I've craved for years that I could never have. Name it, and it's yours. A Bible so that I can read the word of the Lord and try to understand what's been happening to me. Of course. <laughs> yes. My friend, it's been a long time since we heard the sounds of joy ring through Patrick. our Patrick. And my wife and I are delighted to Patrick. have you here tonight to share in that joy. Our son is back safe and sound with us. And I call on you to raise a toast to his safe return, his health, and indeed the return of happiness. Happiness! happiness. <laughs> Who are you? Patrick, I am the voice of the Irish. We beg you, holy youth, to come and walk again among us. Return to Ireland. Come back to us, Patrick. We beg you. Teach us. Heal us. Free us. Patrick. Patrick. Please don't ask me to Patrick. do this. Patrick. Son. What is it? Oh, my son, what has become of you? The time has come to regain control of your life. While you were away, my wealth increased, and the opportunities are even greater than before. I want to bring the best tutors to you here now so that the ground you've lost in your education can be regained as quickly as possible. I know where I want to go and study. You do? To Gaul, Auxerre. Auxerre? But isn't that a monastery? That's where my old friend Brian went. But he went there to become a priest. Yes. No! Father, please! I forbid it! I forbid it! Put all this behind you. It's a sickness of the mind. I know that years of slavery must have taken their toll, but now you must seize the day as it presents itself. Patrick, you're my only son. Priesthood is nothing but poverty and obedience. How can you choose that above a life of wealth, status, and opportunity? It's not my choice. Father, it's... It's a calling I can hear. I keep having visions. Visions? 
You let visions rule your life. It was a vision that led me home. I put my faith in it, and here I am. And now the visions are calling me back, and I must put my trust in them. Try to understand. Understand this. If you do this thing, you are no longer my son. It can't be. It just can't be. This is something I must do. I cannot refuse the pleas of those who need me. Patrick, I beg you not to leave us. Mother, you know I love you. I can't lose you a second time. Mother, please. Stay with us. Oh, stay. Patrick! Patrick! We can't leave things this way. I'm sorry for what I've said to you. I know you believe this is what you must do. I'm sorry. I give you my blessing. against the wishes of my parents, but under heaven's guidance, I had the strength to go my own way. I know I was granted such grace, so that through me, many people should be enlightened. Brian! Brian! Patrick! Patrick, it's really you! Tell quite a story. I suffered much at the hands of these Irish. And yet I love them. At heart, they are good people who just need enlightenment. You have the gift of forgiveness. I don't doubt your sincerity. I believe you are truly called to the service of the Lord. And you are welcome here. So my studies can begin. Patrick, you've lost what? Six, seven years of studying time. Knowledge becomes more difficult to acquire. You need to accept that you could never complete the arduous studies for the priesthood. You can remain here as a brother of the order. But I must become a priest, for I am to be the Bishop of Ireland. Uh, a bishop? Yes, so that I can ordain Irishmen as priests and carry out my work teaching and converting the people of Ireland. You know very little of the world. I may have been a slave for the past six years, but I do know one thing. I have been blessed by being chosen to do this work. I am a humble and obedient servant. If I am to study, then I will study. I will pray and study and help the poor and sick by day and night until the Lord has shaped me and made me ready to return to Ireland. And you must believe that what is ordained will be done. I will be Bishop of Ireland. You will go to Father Ignatius and tell him I've sent you to join the novitiate. You will study to become a priest. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you. Patrick, Patrick, there is a protocol to oh, be learned. Of course. Your eminence. You should go now. Thank you. Thank you. It's... Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. I'm troubled by a secret. That time, remember when we were lads and we went to the pagan ritual site? I remember. I must confess, that night I went back to where they had the pagan ceremony. I went to observe, but I took part. Idolatry. This is grave. I know what I did was wrong. Pagan sacrifices were made. As serious as this is, Still, you are forgiven. Your penance is already made in the years of slavery that you served. You are absolved. I promise. If God grants me forgiveness, I'll return to Ireland and I'll bring light and understanding to its people. It is a promise worth keeping. today through the strength of heaven, light of sun, radiance of moon, splendor of fire, speed of lightning, swiftness of wind, depth of sea, stability of earth, firmness of rock. I rise today through God's strength to pilot me, his might to uphold me, his wisdom to guide me his eye to look before me, his shield to protect me from everyone who shall wish me ill, afar and near, alone and in multitude. I arise, arise today, today through a mighty strength. Many years passed before the opportunity to return to Ireland presented itself to me. Your Eminence, Bishop Gamanis. No rush, Patrick. There's little fear I'll have run you. Your Eminence, if I may. Yes, my son. I've heard we have a visitor on the way. Oh, really? An emissary from Rome, in fact. Bishop Palladius. Apparently, he's being sent to Ireland to establish a church there. You're kept well informed by your fellow brethren. Well, only because they know that... Oh, I know very well about your dream of returning to Ireland. Hardly a day goes by that I'm not reminded by you. And yes, Patrick, this can be your opportunity. If you can convince Palladius of your good faith, he can be the means whereby you return to Ireland. Perhaps the chance to realize your dream has finally come. Come in. Come in, Patrick. Come in. Palladius, I brought Patrick to talk with you. Oh, very well, very well. We have been on the road for several days. Tomorrow we commence our journey again. So please, keep it brief. Your Eminence, as Bishop Germanus may have informed you, I spent several years of my youth amongst the Irish. As a slave, yes. Poor man, poor man. I remember them as a kind of pagan people with great love in their hearts. I understand their worship of nature, and I've long felt a calling to return <clears> there. <throat> I believe that Irish hearts are open and ready. They must be freed from their life of ignorance and slavery. Yes, a pitiful race. Your Eminence, I humbly seek to join you there. I've long had visions. I've. <clears throat> Your Eminence, Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. The Lord tells us to go and teach all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And see that I am with you every single day, even to the end of the world. He's keen. He's very keen. Father Patrick is the hardest working and most devout member 
of my community. We hold Bishop Cabardus in the highest regard, and all was set great value by his recommendations. The situation in Ireland is a delicate one. However, when my brethren and I have smoothed the way with the British and have begun to establish a church in Ireland, we will call on you to come and work with us. Your Eminence, uh, that will be all for now, Father Patrick. Your Eminence, I thank you for your time. And I look forward to working with you in Ireland in the future. from a marvelous God-man. <laughs> Salvation for your sins. And holy monks to teach you the ways of the new covenant and of the wider, more civilized world beyond your primitive borders, where men have learned to love one another and have beaten their swords into... into... Uh, uh, what is that word? Plowshares, your grace. Ah, yes. <laughs> Plowshares. Plowshares? Yes. You know, those um, uh, farm things. That is what they're called. Farm things. You see behind me, lined up above my crest. Oh, yes. Quint. That's what's left of my enemies. Oh, really? Quite a collection. It's been a while since I've added to it. Patrick, I've received extraordinary news. Bishop Palladius went to Ireland and fled in horror. He was going back to Rome and he... He passed on into the hands of our savior. Bishop Palladius is dead? This leaves Ireland without a bishop. And because matters remain unresolved between Rome and Britain, it is a matter of greatest urgency that his replacement be found. The Holy Father has requested that I appoint a successor. And have you considered your choice? From a short list of candidates. A very short list. Mm, one name, in fact. I have the happy duty of anointing you Bishop of Ireland. Congratulations. Never could something be so well and truly earned. Oh, Patrick! Patrick! I'm sorry, Your Grace. I'm sorry. Your time has finally come. I was raised up from the midst of the wise and learned and chosen to help the people to which God's love brought me and gave me for the rest of my life. Bishop Patrick, Bishop Quentin will see you now. Wait here. Bishop Kermanos instructed us to remain with you throughout your mission. A sheepdog is of little value, can only be trusted with a shepherd. What? He's saying we have to trust him.
Your Eminence. Episcopae patrice. Adventum tuum intente onem que pape. Ut ad hibernium mit aris inter nos contulimus. Oh, I see you're not fluent in Latin. I thought that was a requirement for your rank in the church. Forgive me. I admit I have spent more time ministering to the sick and hungry than at my Latin studies. I am more a, a worker than a scholar, Your Eminence. And yet, you have been chosen to represent the church in Ireland, a country that is as close to our hearts as it is to our shores. And closer still to the heart of God. Mm. Nonetheless, they are an, an educated barbaric race, hardly worthy of your efforts. But do tell me, do you really think you can enlighten these Irish heathens? That's what I hope to do. <laughs> Good. Bishop Quentin, may I speak? Bishop Patrick, you know Bishop Brin. You were childhood friends, I believe. Brin, it's good to see you. And you, Patrick. I'm happy that you're finally realizing your dream of returning to Ireland. Your Eminence, as I have said here before, I have complete faith in Patrick. I'm certain he will carry out his work with full respect for the active role of the Church of Britain. Isn't that true, Patrick? Yes. Yes, of course. The work I do in Ireland will be for the good of the Irish people. There will be no division or conflict within the Church. Of that, I promise. We travel on to Ireland with the blessings of the British bishops. Congratulations. Was it difficult to gain their support? Well, if we have as much trouble converting the Irish, I don't think we'll bring many souls to the Lord. Name of the Lord. Patrick, look. Get out of here. Yes. It's a sign from heaven. Are you Patrick? Yes, that's who I am. A former slave of Maluk. The holy youth? It's a long time since I was a youth. But I've returned to help you all to a better life. <laughs> Sire, there's a man at the gates. What's this? A man who used to be your slave, but now he comes in the name of his God. What is this idiot on about, Druid? Patrick. His name's Patrick. Patrick? Patrick is here? Yes, Nula. A man who comes in the name of his God, who was your slave. Miluk, it was foretold in ancient prophecy that a slave would return and rule over those who had ruled him. I will be ruled by a slave. In my days, the slave of a slave. Never. What can I do? Well, look, nothing can change what has been prophesied. Just like that. You expect me to endure this? Surrender all to a slave and obey him? Have him treat me as I treat my slaves? What did he say? I've never forgotten. Treat others as you would have them treat you. Gather my possessions. Bring them into my house. Come on, come on, this way. Come on, right. This way, come on. 
Don't you know there's a reward for any man who puts an escaped slave to death? All I want is to walk this land a free man. That is why I have come to Maluk. Get the chains. We have a slave here to recapture. Air Chieftain Miljuk will make an example of you for any man who thinks he can escape and do as he pleases. Seize him! Look, oh, oh. stop him! Don't you understand? I mean the man no harm! Leave him alone! Patrick? Nula, my friend. I see you still haven't stopped getting yourself into trouble. Trouble indeed. Miljak will have the slaves hide. Nula, please, go to Miljuk. Tell him I want to buy back my freedom. I'm still his slave under Irish law until I redeem myself. Yes. If it's revenge you're after, you won't get it here. That's not the message I've come Patrick, to Patrick, look! Fire! Him honor was more important than life. Miliak would rather die and take his possessions with him than face giving them to you and becoming your slave. He believed I'd enslave him? Nothing could be further from the truth. You did this! I come in peace. There is no bloodthirst in me or in the word I preach. I should strike you down. You need to take my life. Is that it? Is that the way it must be? Well, then so be it. I offer it up for your soul. Patrick, we should leave this place. And be glad you live with your life. back again one day. I fear I've made a terrible start to my mission. Oh, don't expect too much of us Irish. We take our guidance from our chieftains and our druids. And who do they take their guidance from? Our High King, Lyra. Then that's the heart I must reach. I worry about our haste. Don't you think we should build up to this plan of going to see the High King? I mean, first attract some supporters. Build an army? Precisely. <laughs> I mean, metaphorically, of course. Isunimus, think of us as Daniel going into the lion's den. The lion's den? How very reassuring. Hey! Wait! Wait! A messenger from some Irish chieftain, no doubt inviting us to become their next human sacrifice. No, no. Our first Irish disciple. Hello? Hello yourself. What can we do for you? Please. My name's Benignus. I'm alone in this world, and I want to join you. A simple question. Why? Because I believe in your work. Why? Because I believe in what you are doing. And before you ask why, because I believe in someone who can fill a man's heart with strength and forgiveness, instead of this revenge. I saw you risk your life today for something you believe in. Well, I want to believe in that, too. Good answer. Isur Ninus, Auxilius, I am Patrick. I beg you to let me join you, both as a servant and pupil. You are destined for more than that. Your future is with us. Come. again come with the season of the sun. All flames throughout the land have been extinguished. We now await your lighting of the flame of Tara, so that through the might of your rule, light will return.
My king, a flame! What's that? There, sire! There, on the hill! This way, there! See a flame out there! Look, look! Dares to light a fire that doesn't come from the sacred gelt in a flame. That's it. Big and strong and bright. Let all Ireland know that tonight we light the Paschal fire to celebrate the feast of Easter. Lift up your hearts. Adoremus in eternum. Your Majesty, this was foretold. Not for me, it wasn't. We had no way of knowing when this day would come. The Druids prophesied that unless that fire is quenched this night, the light the stranger brings will grow throughout the land, and your rule will fade. This omen could bring an end to your kingdom. What? Forgive us, Your Majesty. What we prophesy is not what we wish. Get over there! Kill the fire and bring me the head of the man who lit it. Go! And the angel said to him, Why do you seek among the dead he who is now living? We are here by a higher authority. Have faith, have strength. Peace be with you this night of Easter Eve. Who lit this fire? I did. I am Patrick. Put this man to the sword and kill this fire. By the forces of our gods, I declare that I... Do not invoke your gods before me. Tell your king I wish to speak with him. Tell him I have come to lead the Irish people out of a world of darkness into a world of light. So, he lays claim to a stronger god. Very well. Go to him with a message. Tom, I want to hear of this god and wish to convert to his religion. King Lera. Don't trouble yourself. Maybe Patrick has set up some power on that hill. We'll get him down here into the forest. And my men will kill him. He learned the power of our gods. But where does it come from if it's not something you've learned? You seem to forget, Easterninus. We have God on our side. Yes, but God doesn't normally deal out powers to his priests and bishops. So when did you last read your Bible? I'm not saying it's impossible. And now you've seen it with your own eyes. I'm just saying that if Patrick does have these powers, Shh. how... I'm sorry. I've offended you. Come, take the stuff. Attack! We're just here! This more of this holy man's magic. We have got to find and kill this druid they call Patrick. So did you get him? Don't ask. The holy man and three others come this way! Turn the alarm! Patrick, couldn't we ask to speak with King Lyra outside? Now it's time to face him. Now we really do enter the lion's den. Keep us faithful in our hour of trial. The spirit is with us. He's mine! You can take the rest. You ready to die? In the name of God, I am. Then go you to your God. <laughs> Thank you. 
King Lyra! I am Patrick. I have come to save the people of Ireland. How dare you come into my court? I give half my kingdom to the man who kills him. I don't fear your threats. He has a way of putting an enchantment on warriors. Then you kill him. Try all you want. The Lord protects us. Who is this god of yours that can give you such powers? He is the god of all things. And it is his will that I lead the Irish people to him. Starting with you, King Lyra. If you can use your enchantment power against my enemies, I'll make you my chief druid. I am not a weapon to be used for earthly purposes. God gives me this strength so that you will understand his might. He teaches us to love our enemies. Love our enemies indeed. <laughs> well, that's fine talk. <laughs> Well then, my good friend and enemy, Patrick, you'll share a little drink with us on this festive day. Hmm. How can I embrace a man who holds a knife to my chest? your help. Beware of this wizard. He comes to destroy all that we hold sacred. Our beliefs, our ceremonies, even our gods. Druid, we are not so unlike you and I. You worship the earth, the sea, and the forest. My god created all those things and abides there. You seek to change what has been our way for a thousand years. King Lyra, let me now teach this man the truth of our way. I will listen to any man. Even you. You see this earth? This is the fair land of Ireland. The gods live beneath our forts, and they give us bounty in a land pleased by our prayer and sacrifice. Let it now show what would happen to Lyra's kingdom if he were to turn to another god. Gobairan and Ehedareka. Gobairan and Ehedareka Shibanawaja Gunnaira. Tell your god to leave us be. We have no need of his magic. We prefer to hate our enemies. Can you make the snow disappear as easily as you created it? That's impossible. The gods have chosen to show their power this way. So have our... Uh, you thought what this sudden fall of snow is going to do to the crops? I'm sure you wouldn't want your people to starve as a result of some druid's magic trick, now would you? I invoke the one true test of gods above all. A trial by fire. Don't do this. <sighs> He's afraid. If I must, I will face any test. I don't know what wizardry this man has. Let one of his followers be tested to see whether it is indeed this god he talks about, or Patrick himself who has these powers. I volunteer. To test your magic, druid. You shall join him in the fire. Have faith, Benignus. The Lord will protect you. Wait. This is more of his trickery. What do you mean? For all we know, it is not even Patrick himself. But that robe is the source of the wizardry. A fair point. You give this robe to Lucan Moyle. Then if you don't mind, we'll have your robe. 
In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Waste more lives before you realize the truth. Forgive me. Who am I, Lord, that you appeared to me in such divine power, so that today, among the heathen, I might praise your name wherever I find myself? And how has it come about in Ireland? that those who have worshipped idols are now called the people of the Lord. God the Son came through the power of the Holy Spirit. Nature itself shows us how three can be one. Three divine persons in the one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Welcome. Have you traveled far? All the way from civilization. We've been sent by Bishop Quentin, head of the Church of Britain. Well, Bishop Patrick will be delighted to have more shoulders at the wheel. Yes, indeed. Just there. Excuse me. Can anyone tell me where we'll locate Bishop Patrick? We were told we'd find him here. I'm Patrick. Bishop Patrick? Yes. There are no lilies of the field in this mission. You're the new man sent by Bishop Quentin? Yes. Then he sends his regards. You must be tired from your journeys. The Irish as a race seem to enjoy their squalor. These are hard-working, honest people as you'll soon learn when you go out into the field to preach. The field? We are missionaries here. Ah, but you see, Bishop Quentin has sent us to establish the system of church taxes and arrange for the transfer of tithes to the Church of Britain. Is that a fact? We're trained in the means of building administrative structures. More clerks than clerics, you'd say. Pardon? He what? Yes, he, um sent us back was perfectly charming about it let us stay the night and refresh ourselves for the journey pox on him oh. that holy humble peasant talk i knew it was a sham he's taken root in ireland he's serving rome instead of us i didn't get the impression that he's sending money to rome either he's building churches and paying chieftains so that members of their tribes can join his order and become ordained He's using church money to buy slaves. I wouldn't quite put it like that. He has no authority to spend the church's money. He's accountable to me in all such matters. 
Well? I really don't think that's how he sees the situation. Mm. The trouble is, he has too many friends in the conclave of bishops. I think it's time I started to show Patrick for the power-hungry heathen that he really is. I want him out of Ireland. I baptize you, Anya, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I baptize you, Brendan, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. What a delight to see an entire clan coming forward of their own accord to seek the way, the truth, and the light. Bishop Patrick, please, I need to talk with you. I have friends in the British Church, and they have sent me news of events which bode ill for you. But I've already received my censure from Bishop Quentin about rejecting the priests he sent. Yes, I know. But you must be warned. Your success here is causing much envy and ill feeling in Britain. I don't feel I was placed on earth to please a British bishop. With all due respect, I do think that some gesture of subservience on your part to Bishop Quentin might help us in the long run. Haven't you realized yet that the Lord's on Patrick's side? <laughs> you see? You worry too much about petty church politics. It'll give you gray hair and a weak heart. Save the women and children. They're the valuable ones. Herodicus, a British nobleman, it's known he sometimes raids this area. The men were hunted down, the children will be sold into slavery, the women used as concubines by Herodicus's army. This is the work of a godless man. We must notify Bishop Quentin and urge him to take action against Herodicus. And what action will that be? Given the fact that the Irish have just as often raided Britain, it'll be regarded... It will be seen as an eye for an eye. And no doubt this Herodicus will walk into his local church with his head held high. Well, I won't have it! I'll write a letter of excommunication against Caroticus, and he will be banned from every church and spurned by every Christian for the rest of his life. Patrick, if you excommunicate this man, it's as if you're saying you have dominion over a British Christian. It'll be taken as a direct insult by the church there, and then take it any way they like. You know God is on Patrick's side. I know that Patrick's voice is heard in heaven. But who says that the will of heaven is heard by the bishops of Britain? Now he's claiming authority over British citizens. I've called together this conclave of the bishops to have him removed. Perhaps Bishop Patrick acted in haste. But given what Caroticus is accused of, Shouldn't we look with more understanding at Patrick's actions? Bishop Brian. I want to know if you, his strongest supporter, are determined to continue speaking on his behalf. Well, Patrick is a good and sincere man. And a visionary. <laughs> yes, uh, well, I don't trust visionaries. They're nothing but trouble. He refuses to work with British priests or to send us our tithes and taxes. 
We don't know what form of religion he's teaching. And these miracles attributed to him. Is that the work of our Lord? Or do his powers come from the devil? It couldn't be. Obviously. You have great faith in Patrick. And so it seems a, a great interest in the conversion of pagans. Perhaps I should set you the task of going north to Scotland and setting up a missionary church for the heathens there. Your Eminence, I have no wish to pit myself against you or Patrick. Now, if you are so blind to the dangers of this work, you are of no useful service to the British Church. In fact, perhaps you should leave us. I have only ever known one thing for which Patrick might stand accused. It is your duty to tell. An indiscretion so small as to be unworthy of comment. Let us be the judges of that. Uh, yeah. Patrick confessed to me once in his youth that he took part in a pagan ceremony. What? I knew it! He embraced the devil! He did his penance for the act, yes. But evil entered his heart, and there it remains! Yes. Finally, you've given me what I need, Brian. You've served your church well. My dearest friend betrayed me. How did he take it into his head to discredit me for something which he had previously been glad to pardon, as had the Lord? Your Eminence, I was just coming to wake you. Well, it's done. I've written my response to the charges. I'll send it to Britain. Your words, if read out by Bishop Quentin, might sound like foolish ramblings. Let me take your declaration. Let me present it for you. I can't let you fight my fight. With all due respect, if my education is to be of any use to you, it's in making me appear equal to their false grandeur. Well... May God, in a better way with words, go with you. I attest before God that I am his humble servant in Ireland, and that he chose me for the task. And so, even if I wanted to return to Britain, I am bound by the Spirit, who tells me that if I did so, I would be wasting the labors I have begun. This is my declaration before I die. So. Patrick would have us believe that our Lord God demands his continued presence in Ireland. Your Eminence, no one should doubt Bishop Patrick's devotion to his work. He is a source of inspiration to all around him, especially those blessed with his friendship. This is all a ploy on Patrick's behalf to maintain his own isolated little kingdom of heaven in Ireland, independent of the Mother Church here. In Britain. Patrick is driven by his love of God and the Irish. He's not a politician. He's, he's not a strategist. He's a visionary. Patrick's ability to enchant is not at issue here. Simply his fitness to rule. And unless he comes before us to answer the allegations, he will face not only removal from office, but also full excommunication from the church. Well, when Bishop Quentin turns against you, he really turns. You know it's too dangerous to go to Britain. If I leave Ireland, they'll never let me return. I've caused too much trouble for the British. Well, then we'll ignore them. We'll carry on with our work. They'll excommunicate us all. They can't.
can't do that. Yes, they can. They can abolish the church, Patrick's slave, so hard to build. Deem the Irish not properly trained in the true ways of the Christian faith. Taking apart the dream, stone by stone. But look at all the good we've accomplished. God sent us here, and we must surrender to his will. If I have to leave Ireland to ensure it remains in the hands of the Lord, well, then so be it. Well, well, well. I don't know which is worse. The news you bear are the sight of those troubled faces. <laughs> what storm clouds are gathering over us now? Bishop Patrick, we have received letters from Bishop Quentin instructing us to return to our monasteries in Gaul. I see. Leaving me alone with the Irish priests I ordained. The lairs have been stripped away. I'm for ignoring the order. Of course you are, Auxilius. You're an Irishman at heart, but it would do no good. No, maybe the time has come for me to go back to Britain. End this. I seem to be coming a, a hindrance to our mission. Go to Rome, Patrick. Argue your case to the Pope himself. You know me, Isoninus. I'm a laborer in the fields of the Lord, not a chess player. You'll excuse me now. I need time to pray and to think. Your Eminence. Brian, is it? My dear old friend, Bishop Germanus, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Come, stand. You look troubled. These are heartfelt words from Patrick. And they didn't make Bishop Quentin change his mind about removing Patrick from Ireland. Priam? Why have you brought this to me? I am the traitorous friend referred to in Patrick's response. I told Quentin about a sin that Patrick had confessed to me once. I fear I have done a terrible wrong. I have served the church and failed God. And you come to seek forgiveness? Your Eminence, you hold great influence in Rome, and only direct intercession by the Pope can save Patrick now. Please, speak with the Pope on his behalf. No. I am old, weak and isolated from the politics of the church. This task can only be taken on by one who has the strength and knowledge to go to Rome and truly explain Patrick's situation. Well, not me, I, I can't. Why not? I, I've served the church all my life. I'm, I'm due to achieve higher office. And you would lose all this if you were to defy Bishop Quentin by going over his head to our Pope. Bishop Quentin is a powerful man. And jealous of his power. No wonder Patrick is such a frustration. For Patrick, there is no power but that of God. And there lies his downfall. In whose eyes? Bishop Quentin accuses Patrick of building a church that serves his own hunger for power. I wonder which of those men God would consider guilty of that charge. The rewards of the church are meted out not by God but by our superiors. I have everything to lose. Indeed you have. After all, our Lord said, what does it profit a man if he gains the earth and loses his soul? Patrick! Patrick! Where are you going? This is my journey, Benignus, not yours. Let me join you by your side, then. I'm going up the mountain. Returning to where you first found God as a boy. Aye, just that. Tell me, what was it like when you were young up the mountain? So long ago. It was a cruel time and a hard life. But I found strength in my spirit and joy in my heart. Yeah, every day that we work, 
I think the thing I love most is the joy people receive when they open their hearts. Benignus, I tell you now, you are my successor. When I am gone, you will take this crozier as Bishop of Ireland and carry on the work. Patrick, I beg you, don't go to Britain. Stay here. Stay with the Irish. Wherever I go, this is where my heart will remain. But leave me now. Go on. I have to fast and pray and seek guidance from God. I sink in a deep mire and there is no foothold. Many are those who will destroy my work. Mine enemies accuse me falsely. Patrick, I am grieved to see you stripped of honor. Take heart in the future you create for Ireland. You planted the seed that will renew the church. You safeguarded the written word and established centers of learning. You lit the flame which will enlighten the darkening lands of Europe, preserving civilization. You have shown the missionary way, which will bring word of the Lord to all lands, even to the ends of the earth. My dear friend, it's so good to see you. Patrick, you can still find it in your heart to call me friend after I betrayed you. I might just as well have been given 30 pieces of silver. You pardoned me in the past. How could I not forgive you? You have the hands of a working man. Quite different from those I've honored in the past. Well, my work has called for me to labor far away from the comforts of the great cathedrals. These mountains are my cathedral. So they send you with the summons for me to leave Ireland? It's from the Pope himself, giving his formal approval of you and your work. Your authority here is beyond question. You are Bishop of Ireland, and no man can take that from you. Now you can finish your mission. My work has only just begun. And so I give thanks to God, who strengthened me in all things, so I could carry out my journey and my work. Look, we are witnesses that the gospel has been preached to the ends of the earth. And in the hearts of the Irish, the message of the Lord has found a home forever. 